Hey guys, Mike here. So today, I'm here to talk to you about the devil all the time. In this review, I'll be going over a brief summary of the plot, my quick thoughts about the film, and whether or not you guys should go and see it. So I'm going to try and keep this review spoiler free. However, if you don't want to know anything about the film, and you want to go in completely blind, then it's just going to this video once you've seen the film. So with that, let's get started, shall we? Not because I want to. So The Devil All The Time stars Tom Holland as Arvin Russell and Bill Skarsgård as Willard Russell. In The Devil All The Time, sinister characters converge around a young man who is devoted to protect the ones he loves in a post-war backwards town teeming with corruption and brutality. And so we have the devil all the time. So guys, going into this one, this was another one which I pretty much knew nothing about it. All we knew about it was that Tom Holland was the lead, and honestly that was just enough for me. And seeing some of the stills and hearing a bit of the buzz around this movie, I heard that this was going to be a really good role for him, and he was going to really shine in this film as well. So with a relatively good amount of hype, I was quite looking forward to watching this one. So, what do I think of The Devil All The Time? Easily the best thing about this film is the performances. Honestly, for me, not a single person puts a foot wrong. Having said that though, these aren't the most amazing performances ever, you know, gonna redefine acting as we know it. But having said that though, everyone was really good in this one. For me, the biggest standouts were obviously Tom Holland, who was just incredible in this film, and has just gone to show what an amazing actor he is, and that he's just more than Spider-Man. But as well, Robert Patterson, even though he isn't in the movie all that much, he, like Tom Holland, shows that he's more than just the role that everyone thinks he is, and shows that he's a really good actor. And it further cements my excitement for him playing Batman, because even though this role is pretty much nothing like how I imagine he's going to play Batman, nevertheless, I still thought that he gave a really good performance. And just everyone else as well, from Jason Clarke, Sebastian Stan, Eliza Scanlon, everyone was just really good in this film. And I just really liked how they tied all the stories together, because basically The Devil All The Time isn't focused around just one character, it's focused around a bunch of different characters from different time points who eventually end up coming all together. Granted, not all at the same time, but still, eventually, all the stories do meet at some point or another. And just the way the story wove these all together was really well done. But honestly, though, despite this, I honestly thought this movie was quite boring. And honestly, for me, it came down to a couple of things. First of all, the pacing. This movie kind of takes quite a while to really get going. And I think that's partly due to the fact that the stories, for the longest time, don't really seem to have anything to do with one another. It's only until later on when the stories actually start to come together does it become a bit more interesting. And as well, the main reason I watched this movie was to see Tom Holland in it. But he's hardly in the movie. Honestly, I paused the film when Tom Holland actually came on screen, and in a 2 hour and 18 minute long film, he first comes into the movie at about the 45 minute mark. And honestly, from that point on, I'd say he has about maybe 20 to 30 minutes of the actual screen time. Because though they do good time management with all of the characters, making sure that everyone's got enough screen time and enough time to develop, for me, the main reason I watched this film was to see Tom Holland. But I gotta say though, every scene that he was in, he just absolutely stole the show. Tom Holland was just incredible in this film. But honestly, if it meant that the movie had to be a bit longer to get more screen time for who I would argue is the main character and is most affected by all of these situations, then I would have been all for that. Even though I wasn't really enjoying this movie all that much, I would have actually watched more of it if there was more time to develop the lead, in my opinion. Other than that, though, I'd say the production design was good. It was fairly well edited. The cinematography was decent. Pretty much apart from the negatives that I've mentioned, this was a fairly well-made film. But honestly, other than the performances, it doesn't really shine in any other significant way. But having said that, though, it's not exactly horribly made either. It's just when I was going into this one expecting so much, and honestly, I got so little out of this one, it was a little bit disappointing. Overall, guys, at best, I would say this movie was a mixed bag for me. Like I've said, everyone was really good in this film, gave top-notch performances, and it was really interesting to see where each of their characters went. Beyond that, the movie doesn't really do anything else to warrant any kind of major praise for it. There isn't really a lot of room for optimism in this movie, but I would say that definitely works in this film's favour. Honestly, in the first like 20 to 30 minutes of this film, I did think they were just being graphic for the sake of shock value, but it becomes apparent a little bit later on that these horrific experiences that the character has do shape them. And it's very easy to see how these people lost their way, turned to corruption, drinking, or just basically blaming or asking God for help. But now, as for whether or not, you guys should go and see it. Honestly, even though I don't think this movie is terrible, 
I personally wouldn't recommend watching it. For me, it just doesn't have enough going for it for me to recommend it to you. But I mean, if you just want to watch this film to see these actors just give solid performances, then by all means, give The Devil All The Time a watch. But if you're looking for just a little bit more, then I would say give it a pass. In any case, this movie isn't going to be breaking any new ground. Okay, guys, that's my review of The Devil All The Time. If you've seen it, what did you think about it? And what's your favourite Tom Holland performance? Whatever it is, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Michael. See ya.